Okay. I can't see what the stream set up. I'm trying to see if you guys are on. I see you guys though. Oh, the go live button. I don't think I. Okay. Add a title. Hello friends, I think I got it to work, holy crap. Okay, so I'm running, um, I had to download a bunch of stuff to get this to work, but I'm running one, two, three, four different softwares, so we'll see how this works out. Um, all right, we got two people. I'm gonna adjust this, whoops, nope, that's not it. Give me a second. There we go, I just wanna adjust it so I can see your um, questions and I have to restart fusion so we'll just talk about what's going to go on while we do that the screen looks crazy right now I'm just going to make this bigger for now okay so fusion just had an update so I'm restarting it so um, let me see if I can figure all this out it says four people are watching how do I see who's watching? Let's see here. Eight people. Well, say hi if you're here. I, I haven't got any comments yet. I'm not sure if that's working. I can see who's on. All right, Fusion starting. That's good. Okay, so anyway, um, today we're going to go over just like the basics, not everything, and not CAM basics, just the modeling or the CAD uh, side. And I'm just going to tell, <laughs> I'm just going to say up front, I'm no expert. Um, I'm just doing this to help people out. Um, I've had a lot of people ask and, um, you know, in the past I would, uh, do some of their modeling for them, but I think it'll be better, you know, if I show people how to do it and do it themselves, because one, you know, if I screw up, that's on me and I don't want to screw anybody's designs up. And two, if you learn how to do it, you don't have to rely on other people. So, um, hopefully this will go well and you guys, uh, um, you guys will get something out of it. Tonight we're going to go over the basics of Fusion and we're going to design hopefully um, a fixed blade and then next week or uh, you know maybe tomorrow night even if I'm bored or something um, we'll do some other stuff. So here's the thing um, what I thought we could do is you know I'll go over it we'll design a fixed blade and if you guys are getting into it you can try to design your own fixed blade and then ask you know if you have any questions message me the questions and we can cover those questions uh, next time we do a stream or if you have you know problems in general um, it'll be great to show people how those problems are solved um, but eventually you know we're gonna go through doing a fixed blade doing the lot doing the detent I'll explain what I know about that um, you know modeling the clip and the backspacer and everything and how I do that and there's 10 million ways to do something in fusion so I'm just showing you my way to do it 
Um, it may not be the right way, but it works for me. So if it works, you know, great. I don't see any questions at all, so I'm not sure if I've got the right screen up. Let me check my phone real quick so I don't miss anything. Um, let's see here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you the way I do things, um, and it works for me. So, so let's see. Okay, see, I, I, I see your questions on the, my phone. Hey, Brian. Brent's on. Hey, what's up, Brent? Uh, Brian. Okay, that's weird. I don't see your questions. I'm just going to open up Facebook in another window on my uh, on this computer. That's so weird. It just has a thing over there. It looks like that's where questions would pop up. But the only downside about doing it this way is I'll hear the delay. So I'm not sure. Why is it not? Let me see if Fusion's up yet. Okay, Fusion is up. Sweet. Okay. Um, let me figure out this questions thing real quick. That's so weird. I don't see any comments. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go on. I'll just turn the volume down. I'll go on here and <laughs> watch my own live stream. Uh, This one on my phone, it was right there at the top. You gotta love Facebook, right? Let's try it again. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go on. Oh boy, I just turned the volume. Who's that guy? All right, so I just muted it. Okay. Uh, questions. Um, can't wait to watch the video for this. Yes. Okay, Casey, that's, yeah. I'm recording this on QuickTime. So when I'm done, I will upload this, and I'll probably edit out all this stuff at the beginning, maybe. I'm going to upload this to Facebook. I'm also going to upload it to the YouTubes. Um, let me just scale this over a little bit. And I will periodically check questions. So let's get into it. I um, hope everything is going okay. It looks like it. Okay, so this is, this is the um, main screen of Fusion. Fusion is free. Um, if you make under a certain amount and um, let's see the, we're in the design window right now see right over here um, if you click the drop down there's generative there's render that's if you're gonna make like a pretty rendering like that uh, animation simulation manufacture and drawing uh, the only ones of these I ever use is design and manufacture. This is the cam side. We'll be getting into that maybe two or three. Um, no, we, I doubt we'll get into it tonight at all, but uh, I might touch on it maybe. But we'll get into that soon enough. Um, so we're just going to focus on design. Fusion for the most part, and I've only used DraftSite before. I used a little bit of AutoCAD, but I came into this from DraftSite. If you have DraftSite models, that are saved as DXF, you can insert those right here, insert DXF um, into Fusion and then make models based on that. It's not the best way to do it because uh, you can't really alter alter the um, alter them very well. Like you can't adjust the line, so it needs to be pretty much perfect if you bring it in. Or if not, bring it in and then re-sketch it. That's what I used to do. Is I just bring it in and re-sketch it real quick. And um, what we're going to do is um, almost any type of design in Fusion is based on sketches, and um, we'll just get into that right right now. Okay, for those of you that don't know, this is like a 3D-based system. Uh, over here is um, where all of your things, if you turn on origin, that's your origin, X, Y, and Z, and then once we do sketches and bodies, all that will populate over here. If you don't have this turned on, I can't remember what that's called. Uh, the design history, right. If you don't have that turned on, you'll get a lot of stuff over here that you do. It's best to leave the design history on, though. Um, and if you need to change it to millimeters or inches or whatever you use, um, drop down settings, it's already set to inches here. But if you click on it, see this pops up, you can change it to millimeters or whatever you want to use. 
Um, I'm not going to go over everything. I'm going to give you enough to be dangerous. So I turned origin on just to sh show you. If you don't know, there's X, Y, and Z, and the way I remember it is Y points towards you. So this green one, um, especially like if you're on a CNC machine, the Y is usually coming towards you. X is going across from you, and then Z is up. <laughs> I don't know a simple way to remember that, but if you know X and Y are the uh, flat planes, so to speak, Z is up. Okay, so um, let's do a simple sketch. If you want to create a sketch, um, well, also let me cover this since I did the insert DXF. You can insert a canvas. So let's say you've got a knife drawn and you want to import it in here. You can. Um, I don't think I have a knife drawing on this computer, but if you click on that, you can navigate to where your drawing is. So if it's on your computer, go to insert from computer. Let's just see if I have something I can show you. Because this is the way a lot of you guys will get started if you have drawings of your knives. If you have DXF files, you know, something from AutoCAD or DraftSite, um, you can use those too. Uh, but either way, you're going to have to um, probably resketch them. And the only problem with the canvas is it never comes in the right size. So, shoot, I don't have anything on here. Well, maybe I do. Let's look. Everything's super slow. Um, with the knives. Oh, that's when I was, <laughs> that's a Half-Life 9's picture. Um, let's see. Exhibitor Pass. That's the knife uh, me and Chris Taylor are working on. That's one of his. That might be a good one to show you. Just to show you what happens when you bring it in. So it's going to ask you what, what face or what plane you want to do it on. I always do it. Some guys do it here. I always do it on the bottom one. Um, that's just the way I lay it out, you know, for cam too. But, you know, all right, so here's something. When you bring it in, you can scale it. All right, you can rotate it, you know, if you like it to go a certain way. And I do. I like, um, since X is across, I like, you know, to be looking at it like, you know, like this. And then you can move it with the center. Well, with this, you can move it around. All right, so here's what I was saying. Like let's say you import the, you know, you import your picture, and your pivot hole is um, a quarter inch or three sixteenths or whatever. Um, what you're going to have to do is create a sketch, create sketch right here. Um, a little tip: these three dots over here, if you click it, you can pin it to toolbar. So it, I've already got it pinned right here. Create sketch, boom. So stuff you use a lot, like I use a lot of chamfers, I use um, mirroring and stuff like that, I've got it up there. All right, so now we're in the sketch environment, and how you know you're, well, not quite yet, it's still a, what the heck, I did this last time, oh, you know what, I might have to save it. Okay, create sketch. Now, okay, it's going to ask you what plane you want to create the sketch on. Once again, I always use this one. And th this sketch palette will, will pop up, and then these new tools all up here will pop up. This will all change. Don't freak out. So what I'll do is I'll take a center diameter circle, and what I did was all that's under create, and I just used our three dots to put stuff up here I use a lot. So right-click on that. Go close to the pivot. doesn't have to be right on it and 0.187 all right so that's that would be and then I'm gonna hit finish sketch that would be a 3 16 pivot now over here this is what I was telling you here's your sketches here's the canvas we made so on the sketches to save yourself some hassle label them so we're gonna label that pivot and then for this it's obviously too small so we're going to, have to scale it up 
So that is modifying. We're going to modify it and scale it. So it's asking for the entities we want to scale, the outline. Oh, that's not working. Maybe you can't scale it after you bring it in. That can't be right. Edit canvas, maybe? There we go. Edit canvas, sorry. Let's, let's look at that again. I right-click this, edit canvas. So what you want to do is basically scale it up until it's close. Well, that's pretty damn good right there. It's not going to be exact if you're going to import a canvas, but that's basically it. Hit OK. And then what you can do is you can go in here edit sketch right here I'm right clicking and edit sketch so you're in, in this pivot sketch again and you can start using you know these to uh, trace it out alright okay so that's that I'm gonna get rid of these because we're gonna move on um, and you can just right click and delete stuff you can also, right here guys, on your sketch, right click save as DXF. So you can save any of your sketches out as a DXF if you need to send them to Waterjet, if you need to send them, you know, to a whatever, laser guy, or I mean if you're going to have your frames or handles lasered, you can send them a DXF of the handle outline, excuse me, and it makes it a lot easier. Let me see if I have any questions real quick. Um... Brent says he's curious on how to make contours. Um, Jason says calibrate to scale, scale the canvas. I should have looked at that. I don't know. Brent, what do you mean by making contours? Let me do another. Actually, let me. Uh, I want to see what Jason's talking about. So let's uh, bring that back in. And that's the other thing. If you guys have any tips. I am more than welcome to hear him. So let's see what Jason was talking about. Let's see, I think where we're what are we doing? Uh, where the heck is it? Our oh, Dropbox. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to select that face. Okay, um, all right, so let's just have that. And Jason said calibrate. Huh. Oh, okay, like you can make a measurement. Let's escape. So, click. Click. Oh, that didn't do anything. Click and drag. You have to do it again. Calibrate. Click. Click. Oh, that's cool. Oh, sweet. That is friggin' awesome. Okay. Thanks, Jason. All right, so let's undo that. Okay. So right click. That is awesome. Like I said, there's 10 million different ways to do things. This one's far easier. All right, so you right-click Calibrate. Go in, click, click, and it's going to give you a measurement. Change that to 3 sixteenths. Boom. Scales it up. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Let's save that. All right, we'll just turn this off for now. Maybe we'll have to use it later. All right, let me check my questions. Um... Sweet, sweet. You can scale the canvas. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what Brent means about making contours. If you will, comment and we'll get into that. All right. So let's say we're going to make a fixed blade and you don't have a sketch. Um, there's one that I was being wanting to work on, so I'm going to show you really quick. Um, I have a handle that I want to use from a previous project. So we're going to right click and insert that into current design. 
and any models like this or DXFs will usually come in the correct size. All right. Okay. So what I'm doing, what I was doing to move around, there's there's a few things. Um, if you hold down Shift and middle mouse button, it'll rotate. Okay. And then the middle mouse scroll zooms in and out. And then middle mouse hold down. You can move it around like that. If you get all discombobulated over here, right here, the uh, home icon, we'll put it back to where it likes to go. Now, okay, so when I brought this in, it was a component. Uh, we'll get into that stuff. And it's linked. So I can't do a lot if it's linked. It won't. Um, so usually what I do when I bring stuff in like this is you can right click and break the link and this is getting far ahead but I, I, I want to use this handle so and then I'll take this body and copy it and then I'm just gonna delete this component alright so now we have a thing called bodies let's expand that it has the handle inside um, and it's sticking up this way like I told you guys I like things to be on this flat plane so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate it and to do that you move it so you can right click and um, do move or copy or you can hit the M key or you can go to modify move copy and see it gives you the, also the the hot key for it so we're gonna hit M it's gonna ask us for our selection there's a few ways to do that. You can go over there here and click this. Um, or you can click this first and then hit M. That's the best way to do it. And you're going to get this funky thing that comes up. So what is this? This can move it in X, Y, and Z by selecting the arrows. Or it can rotate it in X, Y, and Z. Or you can come over here if you're really good and just plug it in. Um, we're going to rotate it around the X axis. I think negative 90. Let's see if I'm right. Nope. Positive 90. Because I want the back on the. There we go. Um, and that's it. Now, how do you do that with the drag handles? Because that's the way I normally do it, to be honest. Make sure you got the right one. So, this is the one you want. See, you can grab it and move it. And if it's the wrong spot you can hit control or command Z and undo it but we got out a the move thing right there and then you'll just rotate it 90 degrees if you have it'll it's it pretty much stops on every five degrees as, as you can see so it's really easy to use um, and then just hit OK and now it's flat so um, what you want to do is you know if you're going to create it completely from scratch. Let's just do a simple one super quick. I'm going to hide this handle by clicking on the eye thing. <laughs> the eye thing. Um, we're going to create sketch on this plane and let's just say we're going to make a super simple knife real quick. So I use the three point arc a lot. I use the fit spline, fit point spline a lot and obviously this one's um, straight line. So let's look at that. So this kind of snaps, you can see. It'll snap, you know, where you, where you want to go. Like, But let's say, th this is interesting, let's say you want to go exactly four inches, and it's on inches now in blue. You hit four, and it's locked. So look, now when you're moving around, it stays at four inches. And if you want to go 90 degrees, to get over there, you hit tab, 90. There you go. Or let's go 45. So that's how you can adjust that. And you can still go back to this and make it 5. See? And it's still locked. And then at that point, you won't be able to move it. So um, that's the straight line tool. Um, the fit point spline. Let's say we start from here and we go here. That's going to be a curve point, as you can see. See what it's doing right there? Okay. So why would you use this? Um, well, one thing, if you if you're doing a design that's that's intricate, and um, well, let me show you what happens if you put another point. This is what happens if you put another point. So it does it does more 
complex curves. Let's just, I'm going to put one more point and then hit enter to save it. Okay, um, and then these drag handles can alter it. See that? These work great if you're tracing something because you can move these. I mean, if you, you can look and see the shapes I'm getting out of it really easy by moving these and adjusting, you know, the handles and things like that. A lot more complex than you can get using the three point. So like if I go to the three point arc and a three point arc works like this, you do the start point, you do the end point, then you come back and do the midpoint. See? When I click, it's going to set that arc there. So if I, I'm still on three point. So if I came in here and tried to reproduce this, and I went to that first point, see, look at that. It's not quite getting it. Because this is doing like a, you know, based on where the, your point is, it's doing it totally even cur even curve I guess is the best way you could put it so you're not going to be able to trace more complex shapes uh, with the three point you're going to have to learn the uh, fit point spline um, but if you're looking for really smooth flowing shapes um, the three point is excellent let's like let's just make let's just make like a super quick funky knife here real quick Oh, there we go. How about, a, how about a hop fill? There we go. Boom. Knife. Okay. And that was all with three point, um, three point arcs. Let me check the questions. Uh, Jim, Jim Tom missed the start. We are not too far in, and I'm recording it, and I'll, I'll repost it, dude, um, to YouTube and Facebook. Okay. So three point arc. Um, if you do this, like I just did accidentally, just you can just hit escape to get out. Okay, and then the control point spline I don't use much at all. It's and it's kind of I wouldn't say the reverse of the fit point, but see when I put the point, the point's not on the line. The point's off the line. But here's what's interesting: you can do some really beautiful shapes with this one, man. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter to stop it. So what you can do is after that is you can go in and control these pull points. See. And if I move it this way, it's going to move the belly further this way. And if I get really close to this, it's going to get, you know, a tighter turn on it. Um, so that's really, they're all really interesting. It all just depends on what you're doing. Um, let's get rid of these. But those are the three that I use. Um... To be honest, unless I'm tracing something, I usually use this three-point arc. Um, but if you want to do something complex, and here's the other thing about using like the fit point or the spline. And here, well, let me show you something else. Okay, let's say we got a fit point. Uh, enter. You can come and build off of that with a different, see that? Different type of line, okay? So enter, and then I can grab just the line, normal line tool, and you know, build off that too, it'll snap. Now, did you see how the inside turned blue when I was done? That means it's all connected. One problem I had when I bring in stuff from DraftSite is if one of these points here weren't connected, this wouldn't be solid. Let me delete this real quick because I want to show you guys something. It would just be, it would, it wouldn't have the light blue, so it means that some of these lines aren't connected. So you'd have to go in and zoom in really tight and check all these to see what was going on. Because if you want to make a model out of this, and the way you do that is click on it, and I'm right click, press pull, and pull it out, and boom, you have your solid. The thing is, and see it popped up here in our body section. The thing is, if these aren't connected and you don't have that uh, light blue center, 
Um, you can't extrude a body from it. Uh, let's see. Now, if, let's say you want to go back in here. There's two ways to do it. You can click on the sketch and right-click Edit Sketch, or you can um, click on it here and right-click Edit Sketch. Um, I'm not sure how to disconnect these or I'd show you. There's probably, I think this. Just click on it. Okay, yeah. Let's see. All right, so let's get like real close. Okay, there you go. Escape. So see? Now, no light blue inside. But if we grab this bad boy and connect it, boom. And you get the black line around it too. Um, so, okay, so that's that. Let's uh, finish the sketch. All right. So let's open my handle back up. So let's say you have a handle you like. And this is one I use for a, a few different ones. And, it's easy, you know, if I have these, and if you guys have the models these are used on, you can swap out handles. So that was my thought process. So let's say I want to draw a um, blade off of this, and I have one in mind. Um, Karen Klein and I did a collab on um, a knife, and it was a big chopper, and I wanted to do an updated version of that. So the way you would do it if you, if you already had a handle is, I rotate it around to the back side where it doesn't have the chamfers and I'm going to click on this surface this is called, they call it a face and what I'm going to do is right click and create a sketch on that face now it's upside down, you can go over here and click these arrows get it where you want to have it and then we can draw off of this handle um, I'm just going to do something super quick and just show you guys Well, that's a chopper. All right, so if I hit finish sketch and if I hide the handle, notice here, there, this is the handle sketch, okay? It is separated by this line, so I can't, um, you know, select them both at the same time. Well, I can if I hit hold down shift, I can, okay? Or if I go in here and delete these lines, delete, now I can select the whole thing, but I'm going to undo that. So we're going to hide that again. All right, so click, shift click, right click, press pull, say point 0.2, boom. There's our crazy, crazy chopper. We turn the handle back on, there's the handle on it. Now because I created the sketch on this back side and extruded this way, the blade's in the right position. If I would have extruded down, it would have been, you know, into the handle. Oh, this is something very important. Let me teach you guys this. Because a lot of guys have problems with this. So let me show you. Let's say, um, let's see. Let me figure out a good way to do it. All right, let's edit this sketch. And let's put a hole here. This isn't a knife, by the way. I'm just, I'm just showing something. And let's put a hole here. Okay, and finish sketch. So I have these two holes, right? If I select this one, whoops, it's on this side of the surface, um, and press pull it through it, see here how, okay, see how, how it turned to red? That means it's cutting. See, cut right here. If I extend it the other way, it's going to join to this, or if I select new body, Watch this. Here's our new body it just made. It is not connected to the blade. Okay? But one problem that a lot of guys have, and let's undo that, is when they extrude something, and you guys will do it, so this is, <laughs> this is why I'm going over it. If you guys extrude something and don't pay attention and hit join, look at this. That's all one body now. Okay? So how do you fix that? Um, there's a really simple way to fix it actually. Modify split body. Um, our body's already selected. Splitting tool. We're going to select this plane and see how it goes all the way around it. Hit OK and watch over here when I hit OK. 
Boom. Now we got another body. The cylinder. Now if this shape's complex, you might not be able to do that, guys. But that is a way to fix it. Okay? Um, luckily, you know, this is pretty easy, a pretty easy way to or a pretty easy spot to fix something like that. We're just gonna get rid of this. Um, I'm gonna measure, I gotta measure something real quick because I'm not sure on the overall link. Give me one second. So, we're going to do 12 inch overall. Let me check uh, questions real quick. Um, do you use components for each item like blade handles, clip each on their own component? That's a great question. Any, almost any YouTuber you'll watch on Fusion stuff says always use components. Um, I don't. Uh, I ran into problems with components I was probably doing something wrong but after I stopped using them and um, start I'm gonna go into something else that people are gonna freak out about but um, after I get my all my model and everything where I want it to be um, and get ready for cam I'll save that initial file and then delete all the sketches for the cam um, Why do I? Do, I'll tell you why I do that. <laughs> you want to ask why do you do that? Um, you can go in and make a, adjustments to sketches, and um, it it'll affect other things in the sketch depending on how it's um, you know tied together. Even if, even if you don't have dimensioning on, and I didn't even cover dimensioning. Let's let's go in there and edit sketch. Let's say you want this hole to be one inch. You can hit D for dimension and select. Man, that's really close. Look at that, 0.96. And type, you know, hit one. So that is dimension to one inch. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, well, here's another thing you can use for dimensioning. Let's say you want it to be even, you know, from here to here, on each side. It's at 0.7 now. So let's do 0.75. And then, damn, I was close, 0.75. So that's dimension, right? Okay, so if I try to move this, see how it's moving? See how it's moving, you know, all this to keep that dimensioning? That can cause huge problems and, <laughs> and did cause me problems uh, in CAM. Obviously, well, not obviously. I might have been doing something wrong or whatever. My fix around it and the way I do it, and it works great for me, and it's been working great for me for years, is I don't do components, and I don't have sketches in my CAM file, okay? Um, so I'm not going to get heavy into dimensioning because, honestly, I don't use it a lot. I do use it for making sure things are, you know, even like this and visually appealing. Um, but I don't use it a ton. So we're actually going to get rid of this sketch. Uh, delete. Yep. So let me turn the compressor on. So let's see. I don't need this body anymore either. We're just gonna uh, remove. You can remove or delete. I always do remove. All right. So let's create another sketch. And um, like I said, we're gonna. This is gonna be a 12-inch blade. So one 12-inch overall, by the way. 
So one way you can do that is um, you can create like a, I do like a guideline thing. So I'm selecting line or L for line. And I'm going to select this point and just drag that bad boy out 12 inches. Or just type in 12. Boom. That's going to be the end of your blade. All right? That's one way to do it. There's probably 10 million other ways, but that's how I do it. Let me check the things. Do you model the grinds on here as well? Joshua asked. Um, yeah, I do. I do model the grinds. It is super challenging sometimes. Um, and on some of my models, I pre-machine um, those. Um, but, you know, it's hard to match the wheel. So I do it enough, you know, just to save me a tad little bit of work when I go to machine it out. Kind of like, um, you know, how you'll break the corners on uh, the blade, which you can also do um, if you have a CNC in your programming, you know, to, you know, save you time where you're not eating up belts. For you knife makers, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so um, let's see what we're going to do. Here's another thing is I want it to be probably not wider than two inches wide. So now here's one thing I used to do. I used to, back in the day, I'd do a box. So I'd do a box, 12 inches, 12. Oh, no. Hold on. Let's go on. That's weird. Why is it doing that? That's all right. We can redo it. All right. So I don't know why I was doing that. All right. So we'd make this one 12, right? And we make this one too, if that's the dimensions we wanted to stay within. Or we say, you know, that's the stop we usually get. All right, so let's get rid of this one. And Okay, what I'm doing, I'm deleting these. These are constraints because I want to move it. Uh, I think I'm about to delete all of them. Might not let me. Anyways, that's not do it either. Well, live action. I don't usually do the box anymore, so it's kind of screwing me up. Um, that noise is Bella eating her bun on the floor, by the way. Um, okay, let me just get rid of this stuff. Alright. Okay. The way I was going to do it this time, though, is just pick the uppermost point, which is here, and just, just go down two inches. And then make sure it's 90. All right. And that would basically be the bottom of the knife, unless we wanted to go higher up here, which I, I do. The design we did came up a little higher. Um, so I might do. Eighth of an inch. Let's see. Yeah. And then make this. Now, here's something you can do that's interesting. Um, two, which is what it is, minus 0.125. Now, this whole thing's two inches. That is awesome. When So, you don't have to see that. It's two inches now. So you don't have to go to a calculator to figure stuff out. You can put the equation into the sketch. Let me check the questions again real quick. Uh, you mentioned you save items you use a lot to use to input in other sketches. How do you go about that? Um, well, that's... Okay, he's asking how I, how, how I save this handle. Um, let me cover it real quick and we'll come back. It's super easy. You select the body. I make a copy of it. So control C, control V or command C, con command V. And here's the copy here. 
right click create component then I'll make it a component down here right click export and save to a project in the cloud or save to your computer or whatever you want export and I'll export it that's it it's that simple so basically so go over it again you take the body make it into a component export the component and then you can insert that in other stuff but when you do you got to remember to break that link um, or you won't be able to do everything that you can normally do with something alright so this is the chopper blade we did um, so what I want to do is I'm going to show you a few things we're going to go back into the sketch because we're not in it I don't think All right, so um, what we're going to do is I'm going to have this finger choil. Oh, here's something else. When you're making a finger choil, um, keep in mind, this isn't an absolute, but keep in mind what size small wheels you've got. Because if this is a weird size, like if it's between three-quarter and one inch, you know, um, it just makes it a little easier when you're, you know, finishing up the profiles and stuff if it's, you know, close to one of the small wheel sizes you've got. It's just, I don't know. That's what I try to do. But, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this line and we're going to extend off of it to start creating the blade. And that's under modify, extend. I have it up here because I use it a lot. So you click extend. And it just went ahead. <laughs> It just went ahead and extended it and made it an entire circle. It doesn't always do that. Um, but that'll work for what we're doing. Let me show you real quick. Let's say we have a curve here, okay? And you want to extend it. See that? It'll usually extend it to the next line. So when you click on it, whatever end, see that? It's going to extend it. So you can click and extend it, and you can keep going if you want. Eventually, you know, it'll come back around. Um, depending on the curve you do. But the three-point curves are perfect, you know, like you're making a perfect circle, basically. So, all right, so let's escape, hit escape, delete that. Okay. So we've got this. We know our blade's going to come down to here, so that's really easy. And this is another re way you'd use the extend tool. Like if I come in here with a line and I go really slow, it's not going to give me you know this location so what we want to do you can go over here and I'm not clicking anything and drag it over and see how there's that dotted line and then it snapped that's how that's one way you can do it let me do it again you can do it like that right place first point and then you gotta come back but there it is right there and then you can use the extend function well, look at that. It already did it because I had it highlighted, and it did it almost to the end of that. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go a little past. Oh, that's a lot past, but whatever. Um, actually, let's see. We'll just drop a line down here. Make sure it's 90 degrees. And then when I escape, hit extend, it'll go right to that. Okay, perfect. And then delete that. All right. So what do we what about this circle? We want to get rid of that. So you go to modify trim, or you can click T, or you can, I've got it up here, and you select it, it turns red, boom, gone. All right. So trim I use a lot. Um, so the front of the blade. Let's see. I want to. I'm not going to go above this one eighth inch line. But I want to come off of this straight. Let's just do that right now. Okay. Well, that's the wrong type of line. Okay, so let's just come off this straight like this. Let's see. So we want a perfect 180. I hit tab to get to the degrees. Okay, so that's perfect. Perfectly straight. All right. 
and then actually it's not what's going on well, what we can do though is we can dimension the end right here to make it two it might over constrain it it did okay it's got too much going on that's one of the things with the sketches they can be very especially with all the we're going to get rid of um we know this is 12 inches, so we're going to get rid of this line. And then, I don't know if that will fix it or not. Let's see. Two inches. Nope. Okay. We're going to redo this line. I'm going to put this one here as a guide, because that's where we want it to end up as. I start at this point. I don't know why that 180 was off. It shouldn't have been. There we go. It clicked in right at 180. Okay. I don't know why I did that. Anyways, that's perfect. We can trim this off. It's not going to be flat at the end. What I wanted to do was have a radius to end. Like that and then what we'll do is we'll trim off the excess and then I do want to extend that up that's fine and then okay all right because I want it to come up a little at the end kind of like the Evo did I can't remember if the one Karen and I did came up at the end like this. I think it did. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to transition down to where the spine of the knife will be right here. So that's definitely a three-point arc. And right, I mean, honestly, right here, I'm just eyeballing it. But let's zoom in. I want to show you something. See how up at the top, up here, if I go this way, it's like going way in. And that's cutting. And then down here... It's cutting into the spine. You definitely don't want that. So down here at the bottom looks good now, but up at the top, it was a little, if you can see it, curving in a little bit too much. I usually don't like that because it's hard to clean up on the grinder. So you want something more like this to where it's a smooth transition, if that makes sense. See how it's not going this way up here? It's going down in here and then that's a smooth transi transition too and then we'll get rid of this top line okay we can get rid of this line too all right so that's pretty much the shape um, at this point I'd get rid of all these guidelines because I don't need them anymore just just select them and delete them um, I don't like to have anything extra especially if you're done using it with these sketches so um, a couple things. I want to do a fuller on this, and I'll show you how I do that. And then for, I can't remember who asked. Um, hey, Joe. Um, do you model the grind? Oh, yeah, Joshua asked about modeling the grinds. I'll show you how I do that. I do have a video on YouTube from years ago about how I do that. It's pretty easy. All right, so we're going to do a fuller on this, and that's, depending on what type of fuller you're doing, um, I was going to do just a normal one like I have on the Orphan, which I use a slot right here. And you basically kind of set your start point. You set kind of where you want your end point to be, and then you select the diameter. On the Orphan, it's half an inch, so 0.5. And that would be the fuller, you know. And then if you wanted to, you could make a hole at the end, like on my Orphan. And it snaps right to that point, point 0.5. Okay. Um, and let's finish this sketch and model it out, and I'll show you kind of what, what we're looking at. And also I'll show you something else. So notice how I didn't select the fuller when I selected the blade. Well, we want to model that fuller. We do not want to model this hole. Um, so we're not going to uh, select that. So if I turn it, see... 
where it is, and that's shift and middle mouse. Right click, press pull. We want to pull it this way. But notice how the handle is not selected. Shift select that. So now we're getting the whole thing. Now when we pull it, let's say 0.25 quarter inch hefty. Join. The damn join. You got to watch that join, boy. You want a new body. All right. Boom. There it is. Okay. So now here's something I use a lot. I'm going to turn this origin off right here. Here's something I use a lot, especially when doing blades. So let's do this fuller. All right, we're going to select it. We're going to press pull it, and it's going to go in and cut, right? Um, I do 0 0.04 on my fullers, not too deep. Um, and also, look, you can turn the sketches off to get a better look at it, okay? So you have a fuller on this side. How do you get one on the other side, okay? This is what you do. This is how I do it anyway. Um, I create under construct a mid plane and we want the mid plane to be be between this side and this side okay you hit okay then create mirror uh, here it is right here I don't even know where it is because I always leave it up here because I use it a ton so if you click select mirror you select the fuller now that's not all you have to select you need to select these sections too. So I'm zooming out. There's only three of them, I think. Let's check. I'll do one on the front. We gotta do. No, that's it. Then those are the objects we're gonna mirror. The faces. You can also do bodies and other things. We're doing faces. Select mirror plane. So the mirror plane is under construction right here. So you can click that, or you can just click the orange mirror plane like that hit OK turn this off so you can see it better fuller on both sides that's simple now you, you now that was faces let's let's see something else let's say I wanted to put this handle on the other side so we see how it looks hit mirror objects we want bodies this time because the handle is a body select handle Select the mirror plane, and you can select it even though it's turned off. You can just go right here and click it. Hit OK, and there you go. Handles on both sides. Save often. I haven't saved this whole dang time, <laughs> man. Okay. All right, so, you know, there's our rough um, chopper blade. Uh, oh, let's click. Okay, let's cover something else. I'm going to cover a couple um, fancy things kind of real quick. I don't see any questions. All right, so let's say we want to add some thumb jumping right here, okay? Uh, this is the way I do it. There's, um, you, We can use the sketch we've already got, but let's do, let's do it different. Let's select this side that we have now, right click, create sketch, and here's something else to keep in mind. When you're doing the thumb jumping, think about how you're machining it. Are you machining it with a 3 16 are you machining it with a quarter inch? What size end mill are you going to mach machine it with? If you're going to do a 3 16 you know, jimping, you're not going to be able to use a quarter inch end mill, obviously. So keep that in mind. Usually I'll just do 0.25. But here's something you got to look out for. Look how close it is to the fuller. They're not going to dig into it, so that's okay. Um, but what you could do, too, See how it's constrained? And when I click on this, that's what that means. It's constrained to this line right here. So it's not going to go into it, but it is close. So that's not really ideal. Um, but what you can do is you can click this and then click this and delete it. And then you can move this up. Okay? Uh, you don't want to always necessarily do that. But we're just going to do it. I just did it to show you, you know, how to do this. Now, the question is, how do you get... Well, let's go ahead. I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. And we've got to turn our sketches back on. Be careful of that. Um, we're going to press pull and cut it through. Okay? And this is how you make more of them. You could just draw lines, but then you got to worry about your spacing being correct and all that. We're going to turn sketches off. We're going to create a pattern on a path. 
And I use that a ton because it's up here. You guys see that. So we're going to do faces. It's a face. We're going to select this, right? We're going to select the path, which is this line. All right. And um, we're going to do, you can go ahead and kind of drag it out and see how it automatically sets. You know, there's three of them or whatever. Let's say we're going to do, I usually do four. Let's do six. Let's go crazy. All right. So now they're all jumbled up together. There's two ways to space these out. You can space by extent, or you can um, space by spacing, which goes from the beginning of one to the beginning of the, of the other one. Um, so I kind of eyeball it, you know, and if I see, oh, it's close to 0.4, just make it 0.4. Now let's look at it. I'm clicking top over here. Let's look at it from the side. All right. And I'm clicking... Well, on yours, you won't have these. These are an add-on to switch to wireframe quickly. Um, what I was trying to show you is the orientation. It's set as identical, but we don't want identical. We want the path direction because watch what happens. I don't know if you guys... I don't think it made a big difference on this one. But the thing is, is if you don't have it on path direction, sometimes it can go off the path is what the point I'm getting to. Um, and another thing you can do, see how it has one direction? You can also go symmetric. So it would be put three in front and three in the back. Or two in the front and three in the back, with six total. Which honestly wouldn't be that bad because, you know, just depending on what kind of look you're looking for. So if we go one direction, we got our spacing in and all that, you hit OK, boom. Jimping. Now it's look how that's not too close to the fuller. All right, but let's say you don't like it that that close to the floor. You can go back into your sketch. This is the cool thing: edit sketch and move this, move it up a little bit. Hit a finish sketch, moves everything up, and that actually does look better, I think. Um, but let's go back just for shits and gigs and move it back to the line where it was initially. Finish sketch. See, too close. Just undo that. So when you move it, oops. Now see, I'm moving it now outside the sketch. If you go back, edit sketch, you can still move it that way inside the sketch. But notice how our constraints back. That's because I put it back on this line, so it constrained it to this line. So what you have to do is delete that again, and then move it off the line, like that. That's a little shallow. I probably have it a little deeper. Sometimes you can move stuff out of the sketch, and sometimes you can't. And usually what I try to do is I try to have this distance to the handle roughly the same as how between the, I just, for aesthetic reasons, I just like that. I'm going to save it. Okay. So, that's jimping. Uh, chamfering is really easy. Let's say we're going to chamfer the front. It's under modify, but I have a quickie right here. Um, it does it automatically at a 45 degree angle, I believe. So 0.09. I just know from experience 0.09. Obviously 0.1 would be half. So if we chamfered both sides, it would come to like a point. And usually you don't want that. Um, so 0.09 gives you a nice heavy chamfer. I'll do the other shot side and show you. While still leaving a little meat on it. See, like that. So that's how you model chamfers. That's really easy. Now here's the thing. Um, I do model chamfers for several reasons. But when I machine chamfers, like if I was going to machine these handles, or when I do machine these handles, um, I usually have a handle without chamfers on it just because of the way I do the cam, but I'll show you that. But you don't have to. Uh, it's just the way I do it. So let me check the questions real quick. And what time is it? Okay, about two hours. I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. I'm going to show you guys how to do the bevels. And I think we'll call it a day unless anybody's got any questions. So um, bevels on a flat bladed knife or a flat, yeah, flat bladed knife like this are super easy. You do have to know, you know, depending on your wheel, like a 12-inch wheel, 
with something this thick, I'll do roughly a one inch high bevel. Okay? So knowing that, we're going to create a brand new sketch. All right? We're going to call it bevels. And what we're going to do is this line down here, we're going to use the offset function right here. I use it a lot because there it is. We're going to click offset. We're going to click that line. See how it selected the whole thing? Sometimes you will use that. And we'll cover that down the road. But unclick chain selection. Unclick the 30 lines it selected. Come back. Get this one. Drag it up an inch. Negative. Whoops. Negative one. Boom. All right. So that's where our bevel will go to. Um, so that way, okay, let me cover the next part because if you're going to, you know, if you do pre-machine these, you are going to have to grind it, but you're going to have, you want to use more meat because you're not necessarily going to have the right, you're still not going to necessarily have the right um, curvature, all right? Um, so the way I do this part here is I use my three-point arc. And I try to, for aesthetic reasons, try to kind of follow this shape a little bit. But basically, you know, and you can do get it close and then you can drag this to kind of follow that. See, that's more, that's closer to, you know, this curve. All right. But this one now is curving down and that's not good. So you're not going to be able to mimic the curves every time. But like... This curve up here we talked about, you want this going straight up. You don't want to go on back because that's impossible to grind. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to extend that line down a little bit. Oh, man, why is it doing it so much? That's weird. All right, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to select the line tool. And what we're doing now is we're just connecting this like I was showing you guys before, and we're making it a solid, see, blue. So if we rotate around, that's on the surface. What we're going to do is right click, press pull, negative 0.09. Same as the chamfer, if you noticed. Uh, and the reason I do it at 0.09, it'll leave us 20 thousandths, which is usually what you take a grind to for the most part. Sometimes you go thinner, it just depends. Sometimes you go 0.025 if it's a chopper. All right, so now that you have this, you're going to select the fillet tool, which is under modify. You're going to select this line, and what you're going to do, see as you drag it, you'll get that hollow grind. You want to set it to the size of your wheel, and a wheel for this thickness with a 1 inch bevel is a 12 inch wheel. So I put it to 12. Um, now, and then you do the same thing to this line here. This line, there isn't really a way there isn't really a system for where you want it. The only thing you got to keep in mind is see how the further, okay, the further I pull it out, <laughs> that sounds good, the further I pull it out, the more sweep you get. But it only go to a certain point, okay? There's the breaking point right there. And you got this nice sweep. But look here, all this right here isn't going to be able to be sharpened, okay? And most of you guys know that. So keep that in mind. You know, we probably want it around right here because we are going to put a finger choil, or I am going to put a finger choil on it. You know, and, or you can bring it, you know, right there. A real heavy, you know, it just depends on what you want on that. So we'll hit OK. I'm going to save it. Now, curved blades are a whole other nightmare with modeling bevels. I'm going to tell you that right now, man. Okay, all right, so we can go back into this sketch that we did our um, jimping with, and we can do um, the finger twirl. I like to use a two-point two circle, and notice the bevel's gone, because when you created this sketch, the bevel wasn't there. That's one of the things about sketches that are kind of weird. We're going to do a one-inch, because I have a one-inch smaller wheel. Remember that? And then we're going to bring it on down. To where to what you know to where you want it, but you you'll you'll know that you can use a one inch wheel to 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 um, make this uh, finger twirl. So then just connect, right click, 
Well, it'll automatically change it to cut usually when you go through it. Just cut it. All right. So we got errors for our bevel. That happens when you try to cut it sometimes. Um, so let's just go back. I think what the reason it did that is because I used the uh, same sketch and this part of the um, model is gone. So let's just select this and then do it and see if that works. I'm still learning too, guys. Like I said at the beginning, I am no expert, but I want to help without doing the work for you. So, all right, so one inch, and then drag it down. Honestly, let's probably do a three quarter inch. That looks much better. There we go. And we didn't lose the bevel. So that's why we lost the bevel. And you'll lose stuff like that, guys, and you'll be like, what the F? You know, like it'll freak you out. Now, when we cut through this bevel, it might screw it up too. It did. Let's turn that sketch off. Let's save it. Now we're going to try to mirror this, and it's going to be interesting to see if it mirrors. Notice how I brought the um, finger choil past this. See that? So all this will be nice and sharpened when you sharpen it. All right, so the way you duplicate is the same way we did the fuller. We're going to hit mirror. We're going, whoops. We want to select the faces, not the body. That's why I selected the whole thing. We want to select these faces. We'll select our mid plane. We'll see if this works. Turn off that mid plane. There you go, boys. Nice chopper. That's it. And on this one, I probably would definitely chant for these because that'll make it look really sweet. And bring it right down almost to the end. That's nice. Um, also, just a couple. Now that's interesting. That looks bigger than point. Okay, here's something. That looks bigger than point I two to me. Oh yeah, this was point two five. That's right. So it's not going to be point I two. But here's how you can measure stuff: inspect, and then select these two lines. Point oh seven. So it's pretty thick. Uh, can we fix that? Well, we're going to try, and I'm going to show you how. Do you remember the um, design history down here I was telling you about? Where we're going to go to where we extruded that in 0.09. So if it's 0.25, uh, it should be 130, right? Let's see, if we want to leave 0.2, and we did 250. Speech enabled. Okay, so we probably want to do 0.1, I think. Let's just try and see if my head math is correct. Right click, edit feature. This might screw everything up. I'm going to change this to point 0.1. I don't think that's... Oh, that's going to leave point 0.5. Point 0.115, maybe? I don't know. Okay, let's see. First of all, let's... Okay, that did not screw it up. But I think I was right the first time with point 0.1. Let's see how much we got now. Point 0.02, baby. There we go. All right. So that is the power of the history. I went back, changed that one thing here, and it updated everything we did. All right? And you can do that with a lot of the stuff on here. So let's do some smaller chapters on these. And look here. You can select both lines instead of doing them separately. Let's do like 0.04. Yeah. And then maybe see what these look like. Sometimes it's hard to select stuff. I'm, I'm using shift and selecting right now. It doesn't matter if you select the points when you're doing this. Okay. Chamfer 0.04. There we go. That looks awesome. Very cool. All right, we're going to save it. We're going to stop there for the night, boys. Um, that's about two hours exactly. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I want to see you guys do your own fixed blade. So do it. And if you run into problems, uh, message me and um, I'll, I'll help you out or we'll cover it 
next time we do this. And I, I might do it, you know, twice a weekend or maybe every another week, but let me show you something super important. Let's say, okay, this is your um, browser. So when you create a new project, let's create Fusion uh, what? I don't know. 101, I guess. So I created this project, right? Um, first of all, I'm going to save this to that project. So I want to save as, not save, save as. Drop down menu, Fusion 101, save. So now if I click on it, it's in Fusion 101. Now here's what's super important. Let's say you guys need help, okay? If you click on people right here, you can I can enter your email, or if you have a project, you can enter my email, which is right here, ericcluther at al.com, and invite, and I can access your files and you can access mine all right um, like this one the Germans is <laughs> mine and Jason Luther's so if you go to people it shows Jason's emails and this is you know hey I'm having a problem or hey this is cool or you know something like that or you know I was gonna make a prize so Jason sent me his so I could see you know the dimensions of the bottle opener so it works out good and stuff you ch change in there because it's saved to this, will not modify folders in your own project. Okay? So you definitely want to save an extra to a shared file. Okay? Because if somebody messes with it, it's messed with for, for, for good. All right? So that's it. Um, I hope that it recorded well. I hope the quality was good. Let me see if there's any questions really quick. Hey, Jonathan. Okay. I don't think so. I think that's it. All right, so I'm going to um, sign off for now, and I'm going to upload my screen capture. And um, like I said, if you guys have any questions or anything, um, next time we're going to go over a folder, OK? Um, we're going to go over what I know about setting locks and stop pins and figuring it out and all that good stuff. So um, I'll give you a, at least, you know, hopefully a day's notice before the next one. Uh, if nothing else, next Friday. But I might do one tomorrow night because it's been a lot of fun. So um, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon. All right. Let me figure out how to turn this thing off. Then. Hold on a second. Let's see. And...